Hello students, this is Brian. Welcome to my first online review session for Biopsychology. I will go over Chapter 4 and 5 for Exam 2. Note that I will only go over what is important in the slides. You are responsible to know most of the material in the lecture notes, but I will pinpoint the more important ones. This online review session is a recap of my in-class review session. This online review session is for students who cannot make it in my in-class review session and for those who already went to my review session. Well, let's get started. Chapter 4, Neural Conduction of Synaptic Transmission. You need to know that during re resting memory potential, the charge is negative 70 millivolts. During this stage, there is more negative from the inside than outside, and it is polarized, and it means that there is a difference between charges from the inside and outside. You need to know all four of these ions, and uh, you can refer them to this neuron worksheet. And then, you, as you can see here, you see the resting potential chart. You will be asked one or two questions. In, in this chart from the exam. You need to know the random motion and the electrostatic uh, pressure. And you need to know the selected permeability and the soldier potassium pumps. Slide 7 and slide 8 talks about it. And you need to understand figure 0.1 as you need to know, you need to know how to verbally explain this figure on the test. Uh, refer to the book if necessary. And you need to know the differences between presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. Presynaptic neuron is when it sends information. Postsynaptic receptors, on the other hand, it uh, receives information. Well, it's actually postsynaptic neurons. You need to know what depolar depolarization and hyperpolarization and one uh, depolarization makes the membrane uh, less negative, which means that when it becomes more positive, that means it's more likely to fire. Hyperpolarization, it means that the membrane is getting more negative. This means that it is less likely to fire. So now you need to know about uh, uh, excitatory postsynaptic potential. This means that this means that there is uh, it, this this means that there is a different de de decreasing difference between the inside and outside. That means it's more positive, and it's more likely going to fire. The opposite of it is hyperpolarization, which, which means inhibitory postsynaptic potential. That means we increase the differences between the inside and outside. It becomes more negative, and it's less likely to fire. And you need to know that both EPSPS and IPSPS, they travel passively from the third side of origination and they are decremental. They get smaller as they travel. And then here's my side note. 965 millivolt threshold to firing and generate action potential, but it must reach near the axon helix. Well, this is actually in the next slide. Over here, the highlighted uh, the highlighted stuff in, in, in this slide is important. So basically, one ESP is not sufficient, and summation is needed. And in order for uh, for uh, us to get the action potential, the threshold activation must be reached near the action hillock. If not, you won't get the action potential. And then you need sixty five millivolts. In order to generate action potential, that's in test. And then you need to know about the spatial summation and the temporal summation. And then summation is basically adding, and temporal means you know rapid fire. That's the simplest uh, you know, concept. And uh, in eight, slide 18, you need action potential is an all or nothing principle. That means, you know, 
all nothing fires. And then during this stage, the voltage activated ion channels open. And then here are the three phases of action potential. And then it, in, in this is the this is the actual order. It goes rising potential, repolarization, and then it goes to hyperpolarization, as you can see here in the graph. So here I made uh, I actually uh, copied some information from the previous slides and I would stick it here. So during the rest uh, during the rising phase, which is this red line over here, this is uh, this is uh, where the cell, the cell starts out negative on the inside and positive on the outside, and then the voltage you know, activated uh, sodium channels open. So then now you get this uh, sodium influx. It, it basically makes the cell more positive from the inside and, ne and negative out outside. And then in addition, uh, the voltage activated K channels open and you get this K efflux. And then basically this is where uh, uh, the potassium leaves the cell. And then this is, and then when it reaches the peak, this is where the, the sodium channels closes. Then it goes into the repolarization stage. So this is where uh, the potassium continues to efflux. So the voltage activated uh, K uh, potassium channels, they gradually close. You can see over here. And then also note, now you are going to hyperpolarization that means that there are too many potassiums have left and the neurons became so negative that it, re it will remain hyperpolarized for a while. Uh, slide, in slide 25, you need to know everything on this slide. You need that, and it tells you that action potential is non-decremental, it's not going to slow down, and it's conducting more slowly than uh, PSPS, and it's passive and active. And, you, and it happens in the stages down to axon, but and it's not happening at the same time. You need to know that. So you need you need to know two types of refractory periods. You need to know absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. And then you need to know what they're responsible for. And I've highlighted here on this slide. And slide twenty seven. Slide 27 is basically a recap of both synaptic potentials and action potentials. You need to know all information from the slide. And then uh, for the velocity of axonal conduction, you need to know that that large diameter equals faster and myelated equals faster. In slide 30, uh, we need to know about passive conduction and the nodes in Ron Beer. Basically, positive conduction along each myelin segment next to, the, next to the nodes in Ron Beer. And then basically what it does is that new active potentials generate at each node. And I've also highlighted that instant conduction along myelin segments result in faster conduction than unmyelinated ax axons. And then here you need to know sal salatory conduction. And then and as you see here at bullet point three, results in faster conduction with my sheet, it's 225 miles per hour. And without it, it's only 11 miles per hour. And in slide 32, you need to know that interneurons do not display action potentials and conduction is passive and decremental. And you need to know exos exocytosis. Here, and then uh, basically exocytosis is the process of neurotransmitter release. And then uh, and also in the arrival of the actual potential, the terminal opens voltage activated calcium ion channels. In addition, the entry of calcium ions plus causes vesicles to fuse with the terminal membrane. And as a result, vesicles release neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. And now you need to know the differences between small neurotransmitters 
versus neuropeptides. You don't need this for the exam. So you need to know the characteristics between small and large uh, neurotransmitter molecules. In small uh, neurotransmitter molecules, they're synthesized in a terminal button. They're packaged in uh, small vesicles by the Golgi complex of button, and they're stored in a synaptic terminal. In a, uh, on the other hand, neuropeptides, they're assembled in the cell body, and they're assembled in the ribosomes. They're packaged in big vesicles by the Golgi complex in the cell body, and is transported to the axon terminal by microtubules, and they're stored farther away from the synaptic terminal. And here's my side note, and uh, pause the video if you need to. And uh, you need to know the four types of small, new, small molecule neurotransmitters. You need to know amino acids, no monoamines, acetylcholines, and unconventional neurotransmitters. And you would need to know neuropeptides. For the test, you need to know that glutamate is an excitatory amino acid and GABA is an inhibitor uh, amino acid. And information is in here. And I don't think you need to know these two. You need to know uh, the differences. You need, in the monoamines, you need to know the differences between uh, Catecholamines, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, and endolamines. And then you need to know acetylcholine. And then uh, we know that acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is used when a nerve comes in, into the muscle and tells those muscle fibers to contract. That's the sign that I got from the lecture. And you need to know these bullet points. And you need to know the unconventional neurotransmitters. You need to know soluble gas. And you need to know the endocannabinoids. Now we're, we're moving to the large molecules, which is neuropeptides. And then there are five categories. There's the pituitary peptides, uh, hypothalamic peptides, brain gut peptides, opioid peptides, and a miscellaneous peptides. And then you need to know about the receptors and you need to know ligand. And uh, you need to know the types of receptors. There is the ionotropic receptors and the um, mesotropic receptors. And slide 44 talks about it and then here and then here actually uh, this slide tells you the process and refer to the figure uh, while you're trying to read this part over here so basically uh, and here's the met metatotropic receptors so you need to know about the other receptors and you need to know the function and you need to know the differences between reuptake and enzymic de de degradation. And, and in uh, slide 48, you need to understand this figure. Un uh, understand this figure will help you understand this figure over here. And then you need to know the differences between agonist and antagonist. And then keep in mind that you look at the end result, not always in the process. And here is the, and here is uh, the examples of agonists. I made a little mistake on the the left that on my review session. Benzodiazepine, uh, benzodiazepine is a agonist. I accidentally said antagonist. I apologize for that. Benzodiazepines is an agonist, and so is cocaine. And here is my side note. Pause the video if if need be. And then also they use an examples of antagonists, which is atropine, uh, which is an acetylcholine uh, antagonist, and cure, cure, which is an acetylcholine antagonist. And here's my side note. 
uh, pause the video if you want if you need to write this down and then here is the slide you need to know if you understand the concept of agonist drug effects and antagonist effects you, you don't need to memorize it as long as you're able to understand that that agonist receptors uh, increase or facilitate neurotransmitter activity and antagonists decrease or inhibit neurotransmitter activity. I hope that my uh, review, online review session helps and uh, part two which is chapter five will come in there shortly. Thank you for watching.